Well, hello everyone and welcome to this English lesson. Today, we're going to be talking about conflict. I'm going to help you learn some English words and phrases that you can use if you're having a conversation about conflict. I want to be clear though that I'm going to be talking about personal conflicts. I'm not gonna be talking about world conflict. There's a number of different categories of conflict. Today's English lesson will be about conflict between two people or three people or two groups of people. The kind of conflict you would have maybe at work or with a friend or maybe in your family. So, little personal conflicts that people have with each other. So, anyways, once again, welcome to this English lesson about conflict. I maybe should have made the title uh personal conflict and we'll get started uh right now. I wanted to start by talking about a fight. In English, you will often hear that you know, Joe and Jim had a fight or Sally and Fred had a fight. In English, the word fight has two meanings. Most of the time, it means an argument. Sometimes, it means that people actually hit each other but most of the time, in a casual English conversation, if you say that someone had a fight, you mean that they were arguing. If I say, I had a fight with a colleague at work, It doesn't mean we were punching each other at all. It means we were arguing and it also is a verb. So, you can have a fight but you can fight with someone. You can have a fight with someone or you can be fighting with someone. So, you can use this word in a couple of different ways. You can say that some people are having a fight or you can say that they are fighting. Um by the way, this lesson will be a lot of slides of people fighting with each other. A lot of slides, uh, a lot of the pictures will be pictures of people arguing. Um it's not a a fun lesson but I think it's an important lesson. So, hopefully, the images don't overwhelm you. So, then again, we have an argument. If I was to define an argument specifically, I would say that it is when two people think different things about the same topic. A great example is the glass half full, glass half empty argument. Some people think that when you see a glass like this that it's half full. Some people would argue that it's half empty. So, an argument usually happens when people have a difference of opinion. When people have a different opinion than someone else. And again, you can have an argument. You can also argue with someone. So, you could say, oh, Joe and me had an argument we argued all day. So, it can be used as a noun or a verb Um, and you could also again just use the word to fight as well. There's another argument too about which way you should hang the roll of toilet paper in the bathroom. Uh, So, when you say disagreement, it basically means that you don't think the same thing about something. These two boys are having a disagreement I think they each think they own the teddy bear. So, they are having a disagreement. They are trying to pull the teddy bear um, because they think it belongs to them. Um, So, the one boy thinks it's his. The other boy thinks it's his and they are having a disagreement. You can see they're not talking. So, they're not having an argument but we would use the word fight here as well. We could say they're fighting over the teddy bear. Sometimes, you have what's called a controversy. A controversy is usually a more formal way to describe two people or group uh, groups of people that think differently about something. Many times in sport, uh, in sports, you'll have controversies. There will be a play on the field and the referee will make a call and half of the people won't agree with it. The other half of the people are quite happy because their team benefited from the call and then you could have a controversy after that because when you watch the replay, you can see the ref was wrong and then you have a controversy. So, a controversy is a more formal disagreement or argument about something. So, um, usually, you have controversy at work or there could be some controversy about something the government did. Um, So, it's a more formal way to describe uh, a conflict. Sometimes, people have a falling out. So, when you have a falling out with someone, it means you've fought, you've argued 
and you did not come to a resolution. You did not end the argument happy. You ended the argument still angry with each other possibly or you ended the argument and you were not talking. When you have a falling out with someone, you walk away from the conflict and usually you don't talk very much anymore or maybe you just what we say in English exchange pleasantries every day. You say hi when you see them but you don't really talk to them anymore. So, sometimes people who are dating will have a falling out. Sometimes friends will have a falling out. They'll have an argument about something and then they won't talk anymore. It's always a sad thing. We have a couple different words for um arguing and fighting and one of those words is spat. You can have a spat with someone. This does not have a verb form. You only use it the way I just used it. You can have a spat with your husband or wife. You can have a spat with a friend. When you have a spat with someone, it means that you are definitely not getting along. You're I'm I'm doing this a lot. I think this means fighting. This is my hand signal for fighting. Um but when you have a spat with someone, it means that you are having an argument or you are having a fight. A good example sentence would be my brother-in-law and sister-in-law are having a spat right now. They are arguing and fighting about money. They're having a spat. Um so, just another way of describing an argument or two people not getting along. When it gets bigger, when a disagreement between people or a group of people gets bigger, you sometimes use the word feud that they're having a feud and the verb form would be feuding. You know, they are feuding with each other. This means that there's not just one disagreement but there's ongoing disagreement between two people or two groups of people. So, maybe two cousins had an argument about one thing and then for years, they have been fighting and arguing about different things. You would say that they are feuding or they're having a feud. Bickering is kind of a small way of describe a, a small description of an argument. When people are bickering, um they're just kind of saying short little sentences to each other and if they're really upset. So, bickering would sound like this. Um let me see who here's a good one. Sometimes in our house, the milk jug is empty. The pitcher of milk in the fridge is empty and my kids will start bickering and because they're trying to figure out who drank the last uh bag of milk. Milk comes in bags and we put it in a pitcher. I'll explain all that later but they'll bicker. Um they'll be bickering because they want to know well, who drank the last bit of milk and didn't replace it with a new bag of milk. So, bickering is like a small we would almost say petty argument. Um when something's petty, it means it's not really important. So, bickering. It's not nice to listen to other people bicker. Bickering can be kind of annoying if you're not the one doing the bickering. Here's a good one. So, in English, we will sometimes say that two people butt heads. They're going to butt heads if they see each other today. When you butt heads with someone, it means that you both have a very strong opinion about something and you aren't afraid to say it. Sometimes people will work with other people and they butt heads a lot. One person at work thinks a project should be done a certain way and another person thinks it should be done a different way and whenever they work together, they butt heads. I think this phrase comes from if you watch sheep fighting on a mountainside, they will butt heads. Sometimes animals actually hit their heads against each other um but in English, if you were to describe two people who don't work well together, and who often argue and usually at work, you would say that they butt heads a lot. So, quarrel is just another way to describe a small argument between two people. When people are quarreling, it means they don't agree. It means that they are um talking to each other maybe in a mean way. Um maybe they're not just quarreling, they're also insulting each other. Um but when you quarrel with someone, it's just another word for argument. I'm a little surprised. Um 
as I was putting this lesson together, I was surprised at how many English words we have to talk about fighting and arguing and um quarreling and what was the last one? Having a spat um or bickering. Um and these are not rare words that I'm teaching you. These are not rare. These are very very common. Every single phrase and word I'm teaching you today is very common in Canadian North American English. So, I think you'll learn a lot as we go through this lesson. Um sometimes people quarrel in the comments. It doesn't happen very often but when you read comments under a YouTube video or on Facebook, people might quarrel about something. To throw shade. So, this is a regular a re relatively new term that we use to talk about when someone famous says something disrespectful about another famous person. You can also use this in everyday life but most commonly I've seen it used when a celebrity says something mean about another celebrity or they might even say it in a subtle way where it kinda sounds like an insult but uh, when you throw shade at someone, it means you're saying mean things about them and usually publicly. Like not not directly but publicly. So, we have a phrase in English to go at each other. When you say that two people go at each other or in the past tense, they went at each other, it means they started fighting. If I came home from work and said, in class today, two students started to go at each other. It means they started to argue, maybe even yell a little bit. If you were at work and two colleagues started to talk louder and louder and eventually start yelling at each other, when you went home, you would say, oh, um Jack and Joe went at each other today. They were really, really annoyed with each other. Oh, and I just thought of another word. We use the word ticked. They were really ticked with each other. So, when you say two people go at each other, it simply means that they are arguing and very strongly arguing. And then of course, we have the phrase to not get along. The opposite being to get along. Jen and I get along really well. We like each other. There are some people in the world that I don't get along with. It doesn't mean I don't like them. It simply means we don't work well together or we don't have the same view on things. We don't get along. You are more likely to fight and argue with someone that you do not get along with. Um if you get along with someone, you'll probably have fewer fights. To debate. So, this one again works as a, a noun or verb. You can have a debate with someone or you can debate someone. This is a more formal word. We use this to talk about government or situations where people present views in a very structured way. Often before an election, there will be a debate. The candidates will have a chance to debate each other. They will present their opposing views on a subject and they will have a debate. They will debate each other and then hopefully they get elected based on how well they did in the debate. So, I'm gonna talk about two phrases here right now to have it out for someone and to have it out with someone. So, they look the same but they are different. When you have it out with someone, it means that you had a disagreement but no one was really talking about it and then one day, you both started talking about it and you both started arguing. So, maybe at work, someone has done something for days that annoys you. Maybe someone takes your favorite coffee mug every day and then eventually you would have it out with them. You would have it out with them. You would go and say, stop taking my mug. Maybe someone is eating your lunch at <laughs> at work. You bring a lunch and put it in the fridge and someone eats it every day. When you find out who is eating your lunch, you would have it out with them. So, basically, it means that you have a con like a conflict where you explain why you were upset. When you have it out for someone, let me explain this now. When you have it out for someone, it means you don't like them and you're always finding ways to argue with them. You might have someone you work with or someone in your family and you think they have it out for you 
That means that no matter what you do at work, they are always annoyed with you. No matter what you do, your brother or sister is mad at you. When they have it out for you, when you have it out for someone, you are always looking for a way, a reason to be angry. Backhanded comments. So, backhanded comments are are kind of funny. Um a backhanded comment is a comment where you're saying one thing and it might sound nice but it also is very critical. I'm trying to think of one. Um like if someone said to you, um you're very beautiful from a certain angle. So, they're saying that you're beautiful when you from a certain angle but they're also kind of saying you're not beautiful from a different angle. So, someone if someone said to you, oh, you have a very beautiful profile like the side is very beautiful. They might also be saying that when they see you from the front, you're not beautiful. So, a backhanded comment can lead to conflict. Passive aggressive. So, when someone is passive aggressive, They avoid conflict but they don't make the situation better. They actually do things to show their annoyance but they're very passive. A good example would be this. If you don't like your boss, some people might go to their boss and explain what they don't like. They might say, I don't like it when you do this. A passive aggressive person instead would work more slowly. A passive aggressive person might steal little things from work. A passive aggressive person would show their annoyance um by not having a direct conflict. So, they might they might do what I just mentioned. The classic example would be someone's annoyed with their boss. So, they work more slowly. So, they're being passive aggressive. They're not actually talking to their boss uh, about why they're upset or what is upsetting them. Um It's always interesting when people have passive aggressive tendencies. Other people will will just do something right in your face. So, it's passive aggressive to work more slowly but if you wanted to you know if you wanted to say to your boss in your face, you would just sleep at your desk. Like, if you were annoyed, you would do something um very visible and public that would let your boss know that you were annoyed and upset. Okay, another example of um a fight or argument uh or spat would be a tiff. When you're having a tiff with someone, it means you're having a small argument. Sometimes married couples or people who are dating, people who are romantically involved will have a tiff. You can also have a tiff with your friend. Maybe you went out to eat and you paid the bill and you expected your friend to give you money later and then they didn't and then they said, I, oh, I thought it was your treat. I thought you were paying for me. You might then have a little tiff. You're not super annoyed with each other. You're not going to stop being friends but you're having a small fight. Um people have tiffs all the time. A rift. So, a rift is a gap between something but it can also describe a gap between people. Often, when workers are angry and they go on strike and things are said, sometimes things that are insulting between the employer and the workers, a rift can develop. So, they're no longer talking to each other. They there's a kind of a gap, an imaginary gap between them. This can happen with friends as well. Two friends might have a fight And it might be really serious and they might hurt each other's feelings and then they might have a rift between them. Something happened that caused them to not talk to each other. It's never nice when there is a rift between groups of people or between friends. It's very hard to solve that. To lose your cool. So, I feel bad for this guy. Whenever I need a picture of someone getting angry, I always find this picture on the free picture websites. So, I'm sure he's just a model and they told him to look angry. So, but to lose your cool means to become angry. When you lose your cool, it means you're mad. It means you're angry. If you were to 
Well, let me tell you a story. When I was a kid at school, someone in my class kept throwing orange peels at me and hitting me in the head. And eventually, I just yelled at them to stop doing it. I was only about 10 years old. So, I would say in the past tense, I lost my cool. I was calm. I got annoyed and eventually, I started yelling. At the point where you're yelling, at the point when you're angry, you would say that you are losing your cool. When you lose your cool, it means you have become angry. Don't lose your cool. Uh and we also have a shorter version to lose it. This guy, he's so tired of wearing his mask that um he he lost it. So, I went to the past tense there but when you say you're gonna lose it, it means you're going to get angry. So, if you're like, oh, if it snows today, I'm gonna lose it. What you're saying is you don't want it to snow and if it does snow, you're going to become angry about it and it is anger. When you lose it, you are angry. You're not upset. You're not annoyed. When you lose it, it definitely means that you are angry. When you get into an argument with another person, when you raise your voices and maybe start yelling at each other. You could say that you had a run-in. You could say, oh, I had a run-in with someone at work today. I was talking about something and they got really annoyed and started yelling at me and I started yelling at them. We had a run-in. Let me give you the official dictionary definition. It's funny how we use words in English, isn't it? A run-in is a serious argument with someone where you raise your voice and get angry. Example, I had a run-in with the boss today or I had a run-in with the police. You don't wanna have a run-in with the police. That would be bad. Anyways, a run-in is anytime you have a verbal conflict with someone. Discord is a general term for when people are annoyed about something. So, when you have discord, you don't have peace. If the boss told me today that I was going to get paid less next year, if the boss told all of the teachers, you're going to get paid less next year, we would have discord at work. We would have widespread unhappiness. So, when you have a lot of people annoyed, upset, angry, unhappy about something, you have discord in an organization. You can also have discord in your family. If your brother-in-law doesn't get along with your sister-in-law or something or one cousin doesn't get along with another cousin, you could say that you have discord in your family. Major disagreement. Strife. Strife is a more formal term for discord. When you have strife, you have uh, a lot of people not getting along or two people. Let's get an official definition of Uh, meaning of strife. Give me one second here. Angry or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues. Conflict. So, strife then is just another word to describe conflict. To describe a situation where people aren't getting along. So, friction. So, the general definition of friction is like when I rub my hands together, they get warm because of friction. When metal uh, slides on metal, it doesn't slide smoothly because there's friction. So, you put oil on it so that there's less friction. So, it slides more smoothly. We also use the word friction to talk about a relationship. If you were to say, oh, there's a lot of friction between Joe and Dave, that means that they don't, they rub each other the wrong way. There's another phrase for you. Uh, There's friction between them. It means they, they aren't friends. Um and they aren't happy working with each other or doing things with each other. There is friction. So, it doesn't mean that there's conflict. It means there's the possibility of conflict at any moment when there's friction between two people. A dispute. So, again in sports, this is the best example. Sometimes there is a dispute. A dispute is when one person thinks one thing happened and the other person thinks something else happened. There is a dispute. Maybe the umpire or referee made a call and the coach wants to dispute the call. He will then have a dispute. Again, subject and verb. So, you can have a dispute. You can also dispute something with someone. So, it's usually um 
a calm discussion, a dispute. It's a little more formal, you know. I'm going to dispute the call or something like that. Infighting. So, when you have infighting, it means people in the same organization are fighting with each other. So, here's a good example. If two basketball teams play each other, if this team starts arguing with the other team, that's just arguing. But if this team starts arguing with each other and starts arguing with their own coach, that's infighting. If you have um a business and all of the employees are fighting with each other, that's infighting. Uh if you have a family where brothers and sisters are fighting, you can say, oh, there's a lot of infighting in that family. So, infighting simply describes fighting in a group of people who shouldn't be fighting probably in an organization, family or a team infighting. Squabble, just another word for arguing. Again, a lot of pictures of people arguing, a lot of pictures of people not getting along. A squabble is simply another way of describing people who are arguing. I had a squabble with my friend. We were squabbling. I don't know if I use it as a verb very often. I would definitely say I had a squabble. Uh so, we have another English phrase, a shouting match. Sometimes, an argument is civil. When you say something is civil, it means it's polite. You can argue with someone in a very polite way where you take turns talking. This person says what they think. This person says what they think and you have a nice conversation but sometimes it turns into a shouting match. A shouting match is anytime two people are arguing and they start talking louder and louder and they start yelling and then they don't even take turns talking. They're just yelling at each other. They're both just yelling to see who can yell the loudest. Uh it's a shouting match. I have only really seen this with children. Adults usually don't have shouting matches but sometimes they do. It's not fun to see when adults have a shouting match. A scrap. So, when you use the word scrap um and there is a verb too to scrap. It means fighting. It doesn't have to be physical but it usually is. If you say, oh, there was a scrap during the hockey game last night or there was a scrap during the basketball game, it usually means people were pushing each other or even punching. By the way, it's rare in basketball for people to have a scrap but it's pretty common in hockey. And we also have a slightly more formal term, an altercation. So, an altercation can mean people yelling at each other. It can also mean people physically fighting with each other. And then, to clash. So, when you clash with someone, it means you're fighting. You might recognize this word if you ever played the game clash of clans. So, a clash is another way to describe a fight. Sometimes, people just clash with each other. Um they they don't get along. They argue. They fight all the time. They clash way too much.